going out to the fields. Huh? I need your help. Quickly. Now. to see you leave, Elimelech. Perhaps we'll return. When this famine is over. Listen, we never knew each other very well, but we are related. I want to help. No, but thank you. Look, somehow I... I've done well during the famine. I appreciate your kind offer, Boaz, but I've never taken a hand out, and I don't intend to start now. Godspeed, Elimelech. Who was that? Boaz, a kinsman of mine. Just wanted to say goodbye. And so Elimelech, Naomi, and their two sons left their home in Bethlehem. Soon they arrived in the land of Moab, where they found relief from the famine. However, shortly thereafter, Elimelech died. Naomi's two sons grew older and eventually married Moabite women named Orpah and Ruth. As Moabites, they knew very little of the God of Israel, the God of Naomi and her sons. But they were good and kind, and Naomi loved them very much. Then, in the midst of this new life, tragedy struck again. Naomi's two sons also took ill and died. Now three widows faced the future alone, together. I've decided to return to Bethlehem. And I want you to go back to your families. What? No, Mother. Please, do it for me. We've always obeyed your wishes, but we can't let you live alone. Bethlehem is no place for two Moabite women. My people will not accept you. You'll be strangers there. As you were a stranger here. Don't you understand? It's my fault that you've been hurt. The Lord has punished me. That's not true. Your God is good. You are good. If you love me, you'll do as I have asked. Go, return to your own people. Ask me to leave you, for where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. And where you die, I will die. For your people are my people, and your God is my God. I love you. Everything this woman has is here. She has nothing else. I will do my best to get her a good price. Ugh, what? There's my cousin Jabesh. That's no surprise. Excuse me, can we start the auction? Some of us have work to do. Very well. When a man dies... Oh, not another lecture on the law. And leaves behind a woman such as this. 
The brother of the dead man should marry her and care for her. Such are the commandments of God. <sighs> Excuse me. However, this woman has no kinsman, and now she is left with nothing. She comes before you now to sell all that she owns. Please, be as generous as possible. First up for sale is this poor widow's land. Ten thousand shekels. Brother Jabesh, that is very generous indeed. I like to help where I can. What he'd like is to buy up Bethlehem and put everyone else out of business. Very well. Ten thousand shekels going once. I think I'll have a little fun. Ten thousand shekels going twice. And twelve thousand shekels. Huh? Twelve thousand shekels. Uh, going once. Twelve thousand shekels going twice. Twelve thousand. And five shekels. Fourteen thousand shekels. Oh. Yeah. Careful. Don't worry. I know my cousin's greed all too well. He won't let that land slip away. Fourteen thousand. Oh. And three shekels. Eighteen thousand shekels. Oh. <laughs> Master, you can't afford it. I know that. But he doesn't. All right. You've got yourself into a pickle now, Cousin Boaz. And I, for one, want to see how you get yourself out of it. Eighteen thousand shekels going once. Uh, eighteen thousand shekels going twice. And eighteen thousand going... <laughs> eighteen thousand and one. <laughs> Boaz? Ah, Cousin Jabesh, your charity has no end. Now you are my home. I 
I've watched you and learned what love is, and I've thought as our love has grown, heaven smiles on us both, for no one is as close as we two are, for you are. Good morning. You're up early. Oh. oh, thank you for letting me come with you. Oh, Ruth, you are so good. Where are you going? To find some food. Stay and rest. I'll be back. Oh, Lord, please bless her. If there's any way to save her from this poverty, do it, Lord. Bring the bundles of grain over here. I wouldn't ask for myself, but my mother-in-law, she's very old. There's no need to apologize. I know Master Boaz would want to help you. You see those women there? They're gleaners. Many of them are widows like yourself. Follow them and... You can gather up all the loose grain you see. Daniel. Oh. Her. Hello. Uh... I wanted to tell you that, uh, well, that you're welcome here. Thank you, sir. When you drink a need, I, I mean, um, when you need a drink, uh, go to the well. My men will draw it for you. I am a Moabite. They may not want to. Well, that doesn't matter. I, I've ordered them to treat you kindly. Well, uh, welcome. My servants told me how you... how you gave up your home and your own people for the sake of your mother-in-law. I think that's very kind. May God bless you for it. Thank you. This woman has, uh, special needs. Let some extra grain fall for her. Better yet, tell her she can just harvest some of her own. No, no, you cut some down and bundle it up for her. And if anyone mistreats her, they'll have me to deal with. Tell the men that. All of this in one day. The man who owned the field was very kind. He let me take all that I wanted. And then he invited me to eat with him. I think the others were very surprised. Who was it? What was his name? Boaz. Boaz? You know him? Ruth, darling. He is my nearest kinsman. Oh, then, then he must marry you. <laughs> no, not me. He must marry you. Me? He's your nearest kinsman, too. Well, what are you waiting for? Go tell him. Tell him that he's the nearest kinsman. But I don't want to force him to marry me. Ruth, it's his duty. Master Boaz? Y yes, Ruth. Uh, um, <laughs> nice day, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. 
She knows I love her. That's why she's so kind. She feels sorry for me. Me, an old man. How foolish I was to think that she could fall in love with me. But if I don't ask her, I'll never know. All she can do is say no. I'll ask her to marry me. I will. Uh, would you, uh, uh, good, good morning. What could he ever see in me? Him with his land and fine clothes. And me, a Moabite with nothing. When he looks at me, I'm sure he sees nothing but a child. But I did promise Naomi. She's done so much for me. I'll tell him. I'll tell him he's my near kinsman. I will. Oh, good night. Did you tell him? It, uh, it didn't come up. Ruth, darling, you have to bring it up. Oh, I know. <sighs> Good morning, Jabesh. It is. The harvest is in, and I'm in a generous mood. Any poor who need help? Any more widows putting up, oh, various items for sale? Land, you mean. Oh, doesn't have to be land. Could be land. Doesn't have to be. Why? Is there someone selling land? Not at the present moment. Uh, well, it's been nice chatting with you. Bye. I don't see why I have to talk to him tonight. Because it's your last chance. The harvest is through and the gleaning is done. When would you see him again? But the harvest party is for the workers. All you have to do is get his attention. If you won't do it for yourself, then do it for me. Miller, where are you going? I'll be right back. Eat up. There's plenty more food. Uh, Boaz? Ruth. Oh, I'm sorry to come here like this. Please don't think evil of me. No, no, it, it's all right. I, I, I came to tell you, or, or to ask you, 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 you are a near kinsman to me. I'm a, uh, what? Oh, uh, a near kinsman to me. You know what that means uh, yes do do you y yes will you will i will you yes oh ruth what's wrong there is a nearer kinsman than i it's my cousin jabesh but i don't think he unless Unless you have anything of worth. I'm worthless. No. You're priceless. Boaz! Where are you? Tomorrow morning! It's urgent, Joshua, please. It isn't easy to call the elders together, Boaz. Now, if you could tell me what all this is about. I'm getting married. I mean, I think I am. You're not sure? No, I... I want to marry Ruth, but Jabesh is the nearest kinsman. I think you may have a problem. Uh, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, gave this to me before he left Bethlehem. It's the deed to a plot of land. A huge plot of land. 
If he wants it, everything belongs to Jabesh. He'll marry her. Oh, I don't think so. No, he will. He'll marry her just to get the land. Maybe not. Maybe he'll j Don't you see? Jabesh lives for land, because land means money. And money is all he cares about. Jabesh, the widow Naomi recently returned to Bethlehem. What's that got to do with me? She's selling a parcel of land. Land? I want to buy it, but we've discovered that... Well, that you are the nearest kinsman. Yes! Oh, well, very well. I'm happy to help the poor widow out. How much? Well, then you want the land. Because if you don't, I'm willing to buy it. Oh, because if you don't, I'm willing to buy it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Boaz, old cousin. It's mine. You do understand. You're the nearest kinsman. If you accept the land, you must take everything that comes with it. <laughs> Bring it on! Bring it on! I can afford it all. Congratulations, Cousin Jabesh. This is your new wife. My new what? Your wife. She's a widow, but you're the nearest kinsman. Oh, you'll also have Naomi as a mother-in-law. Mother in what? They'll both be needing some new clothes, of course. Oh, and they'll need separate rooms. I guess you'll have to buy a larger house. A larger house? Oh, don't worry. Give Ruth a few thousand shekels and she'll have it decorated in no time. A few th... <coughs> this is an outrage. I'm not even married and I'm already broke. Wait until you have six or seven children. That's the expensive part. Cousin Boaz, help me. I can't afford a family. I have my money to think about. <gasps> you take her. Done. So Boaz took Ruth the Moabite, and they were married. And it came to pass that Ruth bore a son, and they called him Obed. Ruth's loyalty and courage was the beginning of Israel's greatest age. Her son, Obed, became the father of Jesse, who was the father of David, the king who united Israel in righteousness. <laughs>